Hi, in this video we're going to see how we can create static LSPs with ERO lists. The idea here is we want to do some MPLST. Uh, we want to create a particular LSP just uh, in a static fashion, indicating each step or each device where the traffic should go. So we're going to see how we can do that in our topology and we will see how we can verify and what elements are necessary and are important to have this enabled besides the actual configuration where we are going to be specifying each uh, each one of the hops that we want that T tunnel to be formed on and also uh, the endpoint. So let's look at our topology, let's uh, understand and then we'll do some trace commands to see to understand what's the actual path now taken between a device and the other and we'll do uh, the configuration that we want. Let's take a look at our topology. This is going to be our topology. We have um, three PEs, so we also have MPLS VPNs here, but for this particular uh, example, we're going to focus on the PEs. So we have P, we have P1 here, and we have P2 here. So let's, the first thing that we want to do is check what's the path that now we are taking to get from P1 to P2 and see if we're happy with that path and if we're not, how we can create a static tunnel for it. Um, the idea being you're manually going to be supplying um, that information to RSVP and then RSVP is going to make the, is going to be requesting, can we have a tunnel on this particular, uh, to each one of the hops and they're going to reply if you can or if you cannot. So we need to have RSVP enabled before we do any of this here. This is important and also in order to, for RSVP to work we need to have the uh, traffic engineering extensions in OSPF or in ISIS depending which routing product, which IGP you're using. In this case I have OSPF configured here but it's something to keep in mind. Besides the commands that we're using for the actual particular configuration of the static LSP, we need to have MPLS uh, traffic engineer extensions enabled in our IGP and we need to have our SPP configured, which in the case of Juno is quite simple. When I'm in one of the devices, I'll just do a show configuration and you'll see that it's quite simple. We just enable it on the interface that we are interested on or we enable it in all of the interfaces depending what we want. Obviously, this is basic configuration and you can uh, add uh, a series of parameters. You can indicate out of the bandwidth, the physical bandwidth of the interface what percentage of that is actually uh, can be allocated for uh, MPLSTE, but just for this particular example, we just it's just enabled without uh, too much information there. Okay, so as I said, we want to focus on the idea that we want to have a static uh, LSP between P1 and P2. Let's say we want to have it um, like this in a straight line, because. That looks like the most uh, that looks like the most logical approach that we can take for it, or because our the traffic that goes between P1 and P2 is sensitive to, for example, latency, and we want to m make sure that we are going to be uh, that that traffic is going to be minimized in uh, you know in the latency department because obviously if it's bouncing around, for example, router four, you know each time traffic goes through a, a device that adds uh, some uh, lag to it, that adds some latency to it. So we want to make sure that we're taking router one, router two, and router three. Doesn't really matter. This is that's just my that's just my excuse to go and choose those three devices. So let's see if that's the path that's already been used to go from P1 to P2, or if it's going somehow via router four. Let's do a trace route from P1 and check it out. So we said we wanted to go to P1. So here we are on P1. So we're gonna do a trace route to the loopback of P2, which is obviously what we will be using for, you know, remember that we are also using MPLS VPN, so that's what we will be using to form that BEP session uh, between P1 and P2. So we look at the trace route, we see that this is going to, this is going to router one. There's, he's always gonna go to router one because that's the only exit that he has out of this, um, besides the CE1, besides the customer edge. Then this is going to router two, then this is going to router four, and then this is going to router three. And finally it's getting to uh, P2. So like I said, 
if we look at the diagram, we don't want that to be happening. We want this to go router one, router two, router three, and then you know, it gets to the destination. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to basically supply, we're going to do the configuration, we're going to supply RSVP with a list of hops that we want this LSP to go by. And RSVP will interact with each one of these devices and you know, based on what we configure, it's going to say, can we have this tunnel? And they're going to say yes or no, and we'll see that the LSP comes up or it doesn't come up. But we're going to be very, we're not going to uh, specify anything like bandwidth, so it will come up. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into our devices and actually do it. So we'll go here, this is P1. So as I said, we want to make sure that RSVP is enabled. And we can do show RSVP neighbor. And even though it's enabled, unless there's some, uh, there's some uh, T going on, there's, if RSVP is not used, it's gonna show this, it's gonna show no neighbors. But when we enable the configuration and they start speaking or speak with each other, we're gonna see some output there. And in fact, it's gonna tell us what label is they're gonna be using, what's gonna be the T label for this, for the, the particular LSP. So let's take a look. So we said that we want to check that RSVP was enabled because important, because if not, you're gonna do the commands and nothing will happen and you won't understand why. When what's happening, as I said, is that we're gonna be pro providing, and remember that this is a list that uh, const constraint shortest path first will provide to RSVP. It's the same thing, only that constraint shortest path first will provide uh, the shortest list based on the parameters for our particular MPLSTE tunnel. And in our case, we're just saying, hey, I want this to go via this, this, and that. But it's the same logic. And the traffic engineering extensions. So the traffic engineering extensions, we can check that out with, depending on the command, but we can say, for example, uh, if we do show SPF overview, you can see it here, traffic engineering, and you can check it with the configuration as well. Protocols for SPF, say display set. You can see there that we have uh, traffic engineering extensions enabled, and this has to be done uh, inside our MPLS core. So good, this is so the uh, RSVP information can be advertised. So good. So let's now get into the actual commands. How do we configure this? How do we say, hey, I want to define a static LSP. Well, we're going to configuration mode, and this is something that's done on the head end. Uh, we don't do any configuration on the tail end, because remember that this is unidirectional, so the return path uh, will, is another LSP. and doesn't necessarily have to come back the same way. So first of all, we'll do set protocols, MPLS, path, and here is basically that uh, explicit it's a, that explicit route object list that I was mentioning. Here's where we define the list, and we're gonna specify each one of the hops. And we're gonna specify, let's look at the diagram. What we're gonna specify is this, this, and this IP address. So those are the next hops that we want for the tunnel. So let's do that. So path, we have to give it a name. As always, I recommend give it a descriptive name. I'm gonna give it router one, router two, router three. And we'll start with router one, zero, 10.0111.1. And here we specify that this is extract. So I want this, if this cannot happen, then the, the LSP shouldn't come up. So we are forcing it. This is a path that you have to take. And that will be router one, let's say router two dot two, same thing, extract, and we'll say router three. And we don't need to specify the P, uh, the P2 side, because this will be, we'll specify who, should, who is going to be the tail end for this uh, with another command. So this is going to be our list, this is going to be our transit routers, um, router one, router two, and router three. Cool. So now we'll do set protocols, MPLS, label switch path, so LSP, we can give it this a descriptive name. So let's say 2PE2. And here we can say two, and you can see uh, multiple options, but the ones we're gonna be using is two and priority, which are the minimum commands. So address of the egress router, what's gonna be the end of this LSP? And in this, uh, in this case, it's going to be PE2. So we're gonna say two, and we're gonna say 10.100.22.22. .22. 
And we're going to say primary that this is a primary tunnel for this. And here's where we are calling. We're calling that list that we defined, which was router 1, router 2, and router 3. So do show compare. And let's do show compare. And top. Show compare. And why am I not seeing my, my list there? Well, let's check why we're not seeing that list there. So we did set. MPLS uh, set MPLS path. We gave it a name. So show compare. Why is that not showing? Let's go and do it like this path. Okay, so that in theory seems to be there. Okay, so that looks to be there. Maybe we're hitting a bug. Let's do, or maybe it already existed. That could be another option. So we'll do commit and quit and check actually what happens to that when we do commit and quit. This will check that the configuration is sane. And now it applies. So now what we're going to do next is make sure that uh, make sure that this is on the device as expected and see what's the status. How do we check if that LSV is up, is down? And how do we check the traffic flow, which is obviously an important part. So let's, how do we check this? Well. We have uh, multiple options. We can we can check this. One of the first checks that we can do is do show RSVP session, because like I said, we want to see if RSVP is actually working. If RSVP is not working here, what we're doing is let's call it phase one, and phase one is defining those hops. Phase two is RSVP actually you know going into each one of the devices and asking them. Can we actually do this? Can you actually handle this reservation? And the devices will have to say yes, no, and you know, obviously the tunnel will form if they all agree. And if there for some reason they can't, then the tunnel will not form. So we do show our RBB session, we get an interesting, we get some interesting output here. Another interesting output, but I'll come back to this. Another command that we can use to check is actually to show MPLS LSP brief. This will, will tell us. Um, we can have ingress LSPs, which means that we are the head end. We can have egress LSPs, which means that we are the tail end. Or we can have transit, which means that, as you might imagine, we are the transit. And here you can see, and I think we can do show MPLS LSP extensive. And this will give us uh, much more information. It will give us, um, here is the, uh, the tail end for this, which is uh, the loopback 4P2. From that this is now up, what's the name of the LSP? And this is what we uh, configured for it. Um, this is a explicit, uh, explicit route object list that we define. And now this is the return path that it was calculated for it. So, Let's now, so this seems to be up. So it means that in theory we have a tunnel, we have a tunnel that's now an MPLS TE tunnel between P1 and P2. So what's the best way that we can use to test this? So let's do another trace route. Remember that when we started the video, we did a trace route and we saw that the traffic destined from P1 to P2 was going across router 1, router 2, router 4, and then router 3. And we want this to go via router 1, router 2, and router 3. Let's see if that's the result that we managed from this. So we'll do trace route, and we'll do 10, 100, 22, 22. And it seems that we are still going, it seems that we're still going via router, um, seems we're still going via router 4. So let me check something. Let's do show route 10, 100, 22, 22. This will tell us what information we're actually getting here. And in theory, we are going via RSVP. So this should be fine. So what are we going to see if we are using show BEP summary? We have BEP summary. We have BEP session here. Let's do set. Protocols, MPLS, Traffic Engineering, MPLS forwarding. I'll do commit and quit. And see if the result is the same.
when we enable traffic engineering, which is basically use that information to actually do the forwarding. And this is something that's going to be done. The same behavior. It's not that it, it wouldn't work without this command, because remember, this is traffic that we're sending from the device to the other device. So this is not a next hop. This is not traffic that we're actually forwarding. If when this when the next hop of P2 would be looked at for, uh, for example, something that we learn via BGP, this is the path that we'll be used anyway. But by enabling that command, we tell it just use the, the MPLS information for forwarding for that traffic that you generate yourself. So this is what we're seeing here. So now when we do that trace route, we can see that this goes via router one, via router two, and via router three. And look at the labels. So this is the T label in each one of those hops. And router one, router two, router three, and finally we get to, we get to P2. So let's check with um, let's check now with show RSVP RSVP session. See here we can have and this is a this FF is for it stands for fixed filter and it's one of the ways that we can have for bandwidth reservation. We're not get we're not gonna get too much into that in this video because the scope you know we're getting out of the scope, but it's an option for bandwidth allocation and how we allocate they actually allocate the bandwidth but an interesting thing here see there's no label in because uh, we know that we have the ingress for this particular lsp but we do have a label out and this is the label that is actually being used to send that traffic out and if we go to for example router one router one will be a transit device so when we do show rsvp session you'll see there that we have that label in so we basically know that we need to swap it. We need to swap that label for, um, we need to swap this label 300,016 for this label right here. And this is how basically, and you see here how this is now stands for transit. And finally, if we look at P2, we do show RSVP session. You see here that our label in, it's gonna be three. So it's gonna be basically implicit null. And uh, we have, uh, and this is an, the egress LSP. And this is basically how we would do this configuration with explicit route objects, where remember, as I said, basically what's happening here is that we are, instead of relying on, you know, uh, constraint shortest path first, we are actually saying, hey, I want the tunnel to be, to go along this particular path. And that information gets fed into RSVP, and then RSVP asks each one of the devices if this is possible, and if it's possible, we get the tunnel, and then you know we get the, tra the traffic goes from uh, via the path that we chose to, as we saw there with the trace route. And I think that's all for uh, this particular video. As always, thank you for watching, and please don't hesitate to leave your comments in the section below.